Uh, what do you get when you cross an angry sheep <laughs> with an angry cow? Well, you get two animals that are in a bad <laughs> <laughs> mood. <laughs> All right, I lost. Spread good, baby. What up, guys, and welcome to episode 16 of the Spread Good Podcast. My name is Brody Nicholas, and back with the homie, Mr. Celebrate Life. How you doing? What's up? I'm doing good. I'm uh, kind of nervous today because a hero of mine is here. <laughs> yes. Dad joke hero. Dad <laughs> joke legend. We, uh, we've we got a good friend here. Actor, comedian, content creator, connoisseur, so many things. We've got Lucas, also known as Earl of Dad Jokes. How you doing, man? I can't complain. How are you guys doing? Dude, Great. we're good. I mean, ready to laugh. I'm <laughs> so stoked to be here with you guys. I can't even tell you. Yeah, uh, no, we're stoked to have you, man. It's, uh, so it was you guys that connected, right? Yeah. How did this yeah. happen? Yeah, how, yeah. How, how are we here? So I self-proclaimed that I was the king of dad jokes after telling two dad jokes on the podcast. The king. And then <laughs> and then I oh. saw you on, on Instagram, the Earl of Dad Jokes, and you have way better dad jokes than I do. Stop so I had to it. reach out. I had to reach out. And yeah, I mean, I it's need to hear now. these dad jokes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you actually know our friend Bree Fernandez. That's, That's right. Yeah, we cool. did a gig together a couple weeks ago. We didn't. We only got to hang out for a few days, but she was the first person I met when I got onto set. And you never know who you're going to maybe know through the industry or might not know anyone there. And I didn't know anyone on that day. So I walked in totally cold and I made eye contact with her. And she immediately goes, hi. And I was <laughs> That's like, Brie. I was like, oh, hi. And I was like, oh, we, we know each other. She's like, no, we don't. And I was like, oh, OK. And then we just immediately hit off like that because she's just the most inviting sweet amazing very talented person yeah she's awesome yeah. she's awesome yeah. yeah we got to have her on it's been quite a few episodes now back huh like yeah episode yeah. six seven and eight. i think i think that's how i found you oh yes yeah. i saw oh, okay. she posted that you or you something guys were and then i immediately when you contacted me contacted her i was like what's the deal with these guys i don't know <laughs> are these guys like, real they're all right i guess so yeah. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> all right enough huh yeah yeah <laughs> so so speaking of being on social media Earl of Dad Jokes. How does this, where does the name come from? How, where, how did it all start? How did it all start? Yeah. Um, it's all, it all started, I hated social media. I was terrible <laughs> at it. I suck at technology. It's just not my jam. Um, and then uh, during the pandemic, my friend Pam, who's also really big on social media, her account, I think it's just uh, Casper and Pam. She has a singing dog. She was on America's Got Talent. She's a big deal, way bigger than I am. And uh, we were at a pool party. Um, outside doing our social distancing and just kind of talking, you know, six feet away from each other. And she was like, you know, you should join this thing called TikTok. And I was like, what's that? Sounds cool. She's like, it's a social media thing. And I was like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> and, like I could barely keep up with Facebook. Um, and then she said, no, it's really fun. It's I'm having a good time. I'm getting lots of followers. And I just really, it's like four creators. And uh, she kind of talked me into it. And then I was trying to figure out what I would post on TikTok. And I was like, I have nothing interesting. I'm not doing anything right now because it's a pandemic. She's like, well, post your dad jokes because I had been posting dad jokes on Instagram, my stories for years for all 30 of my followers. And I'd get like a <laughs> like and I'm like, yeah, they, they giggled. <laughs> um, she's like, so uh, just for one month, post one dad joke of yours that you've already done. So you don't have to think about it too hard um, every day and just see what happens. And I was like, OK, sure. Why not? So I went on TikTok, figured it all out. And I just started telling jokes one a day. And within about a month, I got like 20 followers, which was huge for me. Nice. And then, and then I was like, I just kept enjoying it. So even though it was going nowhere, it was totally stupid. <laughs> I just kept telling jokes. Um, and then one day I got one that went super viral. And I think because I had such a backlog of jokes that no one had seen already, bada boom, bada bang, all these, all my past jokes were getting lots of views. And then it kind of blew up for me on TikTok and on Instagram and elsewhere. Do you remember that joke the, that blew yeah, up? Yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, let's hear it. <laughs> I was at the car wash, which, you know, those drive through car washes, I, I think they're the coolest. <laughs> um, so, so I was giddy. I was excited to go into the car wash. And uh, I was trying to think of something. So I, I was Googling just random jokes. Uh, about objects. So I'd be like, joke about steering wheel, joke about doors. And so I did that. I Googled joke about door and I found a joke and it was 
Um, and I want to get it right because it's not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> of all time. Uh, did you? Did you? Oh crap! Wait, hold on. <laughs> Don't look at me. Right. Did you, okay, look. <laughs> uh, yeah, did you hear about the guy who invented the knock knock joke? No, no. He, he won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get it? Yeah, yeah, I get and it. So nice. that's that's the one. That's the TikTok. that started it. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, and then many <laughs> many more have followed. <laughs> oh man, okay. it just makes me so happy. I just I just love it. <laughs> I love it. And and so, what was that feeling like? You know, being in a car wash, coming up with this legendary joke, and seeing the whole page just kind of blow up. Especially somebody that doesn't. You weren't really into social media. Yeah. No, but- I was on my way to a wedding up in Oregon, actually, and so I posted. I I I, I did it. Did the car wash, posted it, and then didn't pay attention to social media for a solid four days. We went up to Oregon, came back, and then I was stopping by Fresno, which is where my twin brother lives, uh, to visit family, and I just opened TikTok, <laughs> and it was like. <laughs> 400,000 views. And I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> and then it just like, I checked it later that afternoon and it was like four, 490 and it just kept growing it up really quickly, really fast for a really dumb joke. Let's be real. <laughs> and I just didn't really kind of understand or trust it. And then um, slowly but surely just kind of snowballed. So I, I had no idea what was going on until solid four days later. And then I, wow. I was like, this is so cool. And then the, my favorite part, I don't know if it's like this for you guys, but I love reading the comments because yep. yeah. I am not clever. But the people that read these jokes, they I feel like a lot of times they want to like they want to chime in. They're funnier than I am, and so they'll post their comments, and then people will like pun each other out, and it's just it, I just will scroll through and just kind of like it, it stuns me how funny all these people are. They crack me up. I love it, and. And as your community has grown, and so it's been, what, two and a half years now? Three years? Two and a half years, maybe two years, something like that. Yeah. So have you gotten to a point where I know there's like thousands and thousands of people, but like, I know people that just keep coming back for more, like that are like just loyal commenters that are oh, always yeah. just into it. Like top top fans top or whatever fans, they're yeah, called. Yeah, the little stars or something. <clears throat> yeah. Right? First, I have no control over that. I don't know if you guys do, but I don't know how those badges are acquired. <laughs> um, but anytime I do see those badges, I I will like your comment because like you 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 stick around. <laughs> yeah, Thank you for out. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so definitely, I definitely have a few that I met early on, like the first month when I really started telling these really awesome jokes. <laughs> 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 um, and I, I think I told you like 30 followers, like those 30 followers, I know all their names and we would message each other back and forth. And, um, I still am in contact with them because That's yeah, so they're cool. diehard and I support them as much as I can. I always give credit as much as I can. Um, you know, we're all in this together. So, if, uh, I try to do this thing every week called, um, uh, uh art, artist spotlight or i'll take some artist i think is incredible and deserves some kind of a spotlight and i'll write who they are what they're doing where you can find their shop or whatever nice that's and cool I'll post like a painting they're done or a book they've written or something like that because you know we're all uh, social media is all about community right and i feel like when you're lucky enough to have a platform like i do it's silly not to spread it as much as you can to other people who are way more talented than i am and deserve a chance that's awesome. That's such a cool outlook. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're spreading good with your platform. And that's something we've always talked about as we, I mean, spread good squad. But even before this, it's like, I always saw that as like, I can create something larger than, you know, the average account. It's like, why not spread good through it? Yeah. So I think that's cool that you did it so early on. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. yeah. No, it, that's, and how do you, how do you find, is it just you're scrolling through and you just run into a, a piece of art that you're really drawn to? Yeah. Or? Well, I've lived in LA for a long time. So a lot of times it's people that I've, I'm working with that I like, oh, you paint, let me see. And I'll see their thing. I'm like, holy crap. And like, yeah, I've been painting for 10 years and I've sold one painting. I'm like you deserve more than that. Let me try to help out. And so oftentimes it's people that I meet in person, but sometimes it's, um, well, for example, my artist spotlight this week was this incredible lady who sketched my face with a pencil over the course of three uh months i think and i can't remember her name i'm so sorry but she she p.o boxed it to me and so i just took a, a really quick reel of like showing everyone the work that she did and it's incredibly ornate it's really beautiful and she's like just a wicked talented artist so that's one example of so how cool. i choose who to put on the spotlight amazing amazing yeah. carrie is the one that uh paint or drew this incredible um I mean, it's not a painting, a sketch, I guess, of my face. And I didn't ask her to do it. She didn't tell me she was doing it until I think a few weeks in. She was like, just, you know, I'm sketching this. I'm like, cool, thanks, I guess. And then she would show me like little updates every now and then. 
and I just kind of blow in my mind. And I didn't, I thought she was going to keep it or do something, but she sent it to me. So I was like, that awesome. is a bomb. That is that so is cool. Awesome. On my wall now. Yeah. It's a little narcissistic, I guess, but it's really cool. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so shout out to Carrie because she rocks. So what inspired um, your whole love of dad jokes? Where did that start? I've always, uh, like you guys, I get a lot out of um, making people laugh and uh, spreading kindness. It just like nourishes me, you know? So ever since I was a kid, like, uh, you know, the superlatives you get in the yearbook, like most likely to be president, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. I was most likely to, no, I was, I think it won like friendliest smile. So from a very young age, I've always loved to, you know, make people laugh, um, spread that positivity. And then when I was in high school, uh, junior year, the summer between my junior and senior year, I got really sick, I had to go to the hospital, um, could have died, I was in there for a couple of weeks. And then I had to be in a hospital bed for like the rest of the summer. And I was, you know, I think when you're young, you, uh, at some point you face your mortality in a weird way, whether it's a uh, close relative dying or you almost dying. And it kind of shifts your perspective from being an adolescent to an adult. And in that moment, I remember being really depressed, really sad. I, th um, I thought I was going to lose my leg. I thought I was going to die. No one could figure out what's going on. Long story short, long story long. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a conscious kind of come to come to me moment where I realized uh, I don't want to live a life squandered. Like I, I want to make sure I, I do what I want to do. And so I made a kind of oath to myself to always be positive, not always be happy, but always be positive as much as possible. Then you could be really unhappy and totally miserable and still live a positive out outlook, a, a lifestyle, I guess. Um, so that's probably the genesis of where me just wanting to make people laugh and tell really, really great jokes came from. <laughs> um, but then the name, can I tell you where I got my name? They're yeah, all yes. bad jokes. So stupid. I, so that, that, the lady Panda I was talking about, she's one of my best friends. We've done a million plays together. She's fantastic. Um, when she, we were at that pool party talking about, she was trying to tell me I should try TikTok and just give it a whirl. She, I was like, what a, I'm, uh, I, I think I looked up Lucas Alifano, which is my name, and it was taken. I was like, well, crap, I can't, I can't join now. My <laughs> username is taken. She's like, no, you don't have to use your name as a username. I was like, well, how will people find me? And we had a little argument. Anyway, she <laughs> finally told me, she's like, you know what, you just create something. And I was like, dad joke guy? And she's like, no, you know what it should be? The Earl of Dad Jokes. I looked at her and I was like, what that is so stupid i'm not a dad and i'm not an earl <laughs> and she's like exactly and i was like that makes no sense and she's like well because everyone will see that and be like that makes no sense and then they'll think about it and i was like oh my god you're brilliant so that's i was like sure wow. I, I was sore <laughs> no it's okay <laughs> it's like, keep swearing sure f it uh earl dedrick no one's gonna see what dumb tiktoks anyway <laughs> <laughs> and then one thing led to another and everyone started coming, calling me Earl. And then when people, Dude, I thought you were Earl. Yeah. Like a lot of people ago. think I'm Earl. If I get like a cameo request or something, they're like, Hey Earl. And I'm like, my name's actually no, I, I've, but now it's too late. I can't be Lucas of dad jokes. Well, no, well, I think we're making the switch right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. You didn't hear first. Lucas of dad <laughs> jokes. That's great. So Earl. So there's no like, it's not like your grandpa's name. There's no connect. It's just she thought of Earl. No, yeah, it's a big fat lie. I ju <laughs> it's just the Earl of dad jokes, and I and I trust her judgment because she's a writer, okay, a brilliant writer, and she writes like um, uh, like uh, like one two three jokes. She like she's just really good at comedic, fast, witty writing, and so she just came up with it on the fly, and I trust her. So if she comes up with something weird and that makes me go what. I'm like, you know, that's actually kind of a smart idea because it make other people go, what? As opposed to, you know, Lucas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <"Wah." laughs> That's good. And it's like my name on Instagram. Nick. Nick. Yeah. Did you, did you look for Nick or Donia's when you first started? Yeah. I, I need to, I was going to do King of Dad jokes, but. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that was the other thing king felt lofty and i knew that if i put king of dad jokes after because I, I went back and forth about earl for a little bit i was like no people are going to come for me if they if i say king then oh, i'll have something yeah. to prove but if i say earl whatever he throws out there <laughs> i was like oh is it earl yeah <laughs> this dad joke so yeah <laughs> so with the content with that with these dad jokes where do you get all of them do you write all your own content do you <laughs> no okay. i did <laughs> okay for a while right for a while yeah i i get them from like three sources i either make them up myself um i'll i'll be bored and i'll google joke about snails and i'll just kind of go through and if one catches me 
it makes me giggle. I have to go immediately to my bathroom because that's where I have good lighting. <laughs> and then and I got to tell the joke really fast uh, because if I tell it more than once or if I think about it too much, it loses its like natural humor to me. See, Does that make sense? I've been thinking about these jokes that I'm going to tell today See, oh, for you so do long. That. No, because uh, I was telling him what I really liked about dude, your delivery is so authentic. And now meeting you on and off camera, that's just who you are. Like, it's freaking yeah. awesome. Thanks, it's, it's, man. it's like not even an act. Like, I, it's pretty freaking cool. I ruined yeah. quite a few jokes by, by, <laughs> by like messing up two or three takes in. And then by the fourth take, I it's just not funny to me anymore. I'm like, well, fuck that. Oops, God. <laughs> fuck it. It's so, fuck it. I messed up that joke and I, I have to toss it now because it's just, it doesn't doesn't hit me as good anymore and i can't fake that you know yeah, yeah um i feel like you could spot a phony really easily especially on social media not that there's something anything necessarily wrong with people kind of doing that like fake laugh there's plenty of people and the jokes are still funny and i, and I love that same with people that do like deadpan jokes mm -hmm. for the sake of like that's just how you tell a joke everyone just kind of does it differently but um i just not how i'm built yeah no dude that's it's not fun. it's just not fun for me to post a joke where i'm like rehearsed or, yeah it rehearsed exactly yeah, yeah. dude that that's awesome so those are the two ways and then the last way is if someone sends me a joke okay um and i'll always give them credit because some like i said they're, they're freaking hilarious i'll always be like something like thanks for the giggle karen and then send it off yep karen yeah. Karen, queen, that's, of, queen that, of that's dad my jokes. mom's name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So she writes she a lot of the loves content, my huh? jokes. Yes. <laughs> she's the best. I take her for spa days every Mother's Day, and anytime we're at the spa, <laughs> she's like, "Honey, can we do can we do a dad joke together?" <laughs> oh, wow. She's like, "I got my fancy hat and I got nice. my makeup," and I was like, "Yeah, mom, let's bust this out." And so oh, we'll do some good. kind of a spa joke. She's very supportive. So you're, yeah. I saw you went to Africa, right, with with your dad. Yeah, yeah family got back a few weeks ago. Very, very important to you. Very. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my dad and my mom, especially and my twin brother, Jesse, and my little brother, Nico. Those are like, that's my core. Mm -hmm. um, my dad is like my soul papa. He just gets me in a way that uh, who anyone who watches our videos together or has followed me for a while can see that we have a connection that's like uh, rare and special and I don't take it for granted. And it uh, uh, breaks my heart when I hear, I get a lot of stories from people like, cherish what you have with your dad. I lost mine five years ago, stuff like that. Um, so I know how lucky I am there. And then my mom is just my biggest cheerleader in the whole wide world. And she'll she'll wrestle a tiger if that Tyler's bullying me. Like every time that she'll read a comment if someone's like, <laughs> that's the other thing. Because sometimes these comments can be really yeah. nasty and mean yeah. and cleverly mean. Like, And I actually kind of give props to those people because like, wow, you really thought that out. I was really mean. <laughs> um, but sometimes she'll read something um, and she'll be like, honey, do you want me to? Because I guess, you know, I'm his mother and he is not like that. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Sounds like something my mom would Don't do. Engage. Yeah. Um, and then my brother is my twin. So we have. Um, uh, are you guys, do you have brothers or sisters? You have brothers. I, I have know. a brother. Oh, yeah. that's right. You wrote a book. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a uh, little sister. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, there's something special about having siblings that you can't quite explain to someone who's an only child. And then my little brother, Nico, who was his birthday yesterday. Shout out, nice. Nico. Happy, Happy birthday, Nico. What's up, buddy? Um, we Zoomed. And uh, he's also, like, he's quiet. He's the opposite of me, really. He's very quiet and subdued, but he'll, like, let rip a zinger right in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> like, over Thanksgiving dinner, and everyone's just, like, talking, talking. And then it'll land, and it just, like, destroys the room. <laughs> he's way funnier than I am. That's awesome. Yeah, so, so that, family's super important. Does your uh, twin brother also tell dad jokes? You guys ever? My twin brother is not funny at all. <laughs> And he's uh, he's not identical. He's fraternal. Oh, okay. thank God, because he's butt ugly. Uh, <laughs> but he's not. He, he's a he's actually a doctor, oh. a pediatrician. <laughs> so exciting. Uh, he, he and his wife are both uh, in the medical field, and they're amazing, and they're really funny. Both, um, obviously, they're incredible, but they're on completely different career paths than me so he'll be like <laughs> um i saved a child's life today and I'm like cool i told the joke <laughs> i got some views <laughs> and i'm like cool I'll see you at thanksgiving all right <laughs> that's awesome and you guys grew up uh born in san francisco raised in the bay area nice yes yeah, so i'm from the bay too yeah go yeah bay. Yeah. Oh, yeah i miss it up there yeah so i, I grew up in sacramento oh, so okay. yeah i lived there for four years and then grew up in sac and then came down here oh but, nice so wow both yeah. norcal kids that's hella yeah. cool i i i missed hella, the fog hella cool nope. hella cool yeah that was a that was a big thing man oh yeah hella. i had to yeah. train myself out of that i word. know right yeah so you think wicked on the east coast mm -hmm. or boston is like Mad hella loud. out here yeah yeah, yeah. That's so funny. When did you move down here? 
Uh, right, right, well, I, I went to grad school in San Francisco and then right from there, I went to New York to do shows. And then, um, the industry took me to LA, I think about 10 years ago. What, uh, what kind of shows? My first show straight out of grad school was crazy. Do you know who Joan Rivers is? Obviously, mm-hmm. you know Joan, Joan Rivers. Rivers yeah, sorry. I don't know why I say it like that. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Joan Rivers was doing a Broadway show, and I auditioned for it and got the part of her assistant. It was the night before a red carpet event, and it took the whole play took place over the course of like uh, that the evening before, where a lot of drama happens. And it was just her, me, and uh, a hairstylist. It was like a three person cast, and then someone goes in at the end. But um, I was straight out of school, so I was like, man, I've just been like through intense training. I know what I'm doing. This is going to be a piece of cake, blah, blah, blah. But, and I met her, and all I knew about her was that she did the red carpet thing and she was kind of snarky. And so I was like, well, I don't want to work with like Anthony Hopkins, but fine. <laughs> um, I didn't know that she was like a Tony nominee. I didn't know that she was this incredible comedian that had done late night and like, like a, a true legend in the field. I had no clue. I was such an idiot. Um, so working with her was incredible because it was like working with a hurricane, especially straight out of grad school, because everything was very structured and very intense. Um, but with her, uh, I, I was just kind of her backup, even though I was on stage with her for the entire play, for the most part, she had these ma- crazy monologues. And um, I was basically there just to make sure that the story stayed on track because <clears throat> sometimes lines would go up, but she would always find her way back and she would do a show that would go to like 1130 at night. And then she'd go to do stand up at midnight. And she was like in her late seventies, early eighties. I want to say, I don't really know. And then she'd do that till two or three in the morning and every single night, like she was committed and her work ethic was nuts. Can I tell you a quick story about her that I think yeah. is yes. bonkers? Okay. So I was straight to school. I had no money. I had no car, no nothing. I go to New York. I'm not living the dream on Broadway. And small cast. It's very intimate. Meet Joan for the first time. Super chill. Lunchtime happens, and she's got a Subway sandwich. Her assistant's bringing her a Subway sandwich, and she takes out the dough and the bread, and then she takes out the tomato, takes out the lettuce, takes out the pickle, takes out the turkey, throws everything away, eats the turkey, and that's it. And I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> this person's nuts. And then she does this every rehearsal. And finally, we get to know each other to, at a place where I feel comfortable confronting her about it, because as a starving, really poor kid, I was like, I will eat that. <laughs> And so I took her aside and I was like, why do, you do, why do you do that? And she's like, well, honey, I don't want the bread. And then I don't want that and that. But I do want the flavor of all of that and that in the turkey. And so that's why I eat that. And I was like, that's so weird. And then we made a deal after that that she would give me the re- scraps, basically. So I would just have veggie sandwiches for lunch every day. Yeah, she was so sweet. She housed me. The first week I went there, my my housing fell through. Long story. So I got to stay in this penthouse. Wow. And then <laughs> she's dead now, so she won't mind. The first thing <laughs> I did when I got there in her apartment was, of course, you go to like the bathroom. I want to see what this what she puts on her face. And then her fridge. And so I went to the bathroom and everything was in French. So I was like, damn, I have no clue now. And then I went to the fridge and I guess she like, could you not? It's really hard not to swear on this. Sorry. And you let me know if I'm talking too much. No, okay. no, I wait, kind wait, of a, dude, this is great. I'm losing so many calories right she, now. <laughs> I opened the fridge and she had two rotisserie chickens and that's it. And then I opened the freezer and it was two pints of gelato, uh, gelato from Italy. And that was it. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? It just made no sense. There's so much about this lady that was just crazy to me, but she was like the sweetest, loveliest, like Jewish mom you're ever going to meet. Wow, that dude, was, what an experience. Yeah, that was, so that that was, was your right first shot right out of grad yeah, school. Yeah, she was amazing. Oh, shit. Wait, do you know who Joan Rivers is? Oh, okay, all right. You're a young kid. <laughs> you might not. Yeah, she's an OG. She's amazing. Wow. Okay, and then, and then the second job, was it was anything anything close to that? Like, <laughs> I did Ghost Whisperer. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think the second job I did is when I moved back to, I moved to LA. Um, okay. I was really lucky when I uh, was in grad school, Mark Ruffalo came to do like those conservatory hour kind of things. And it was just, you know, the 14 of us, uh, the students or 15 of us, and then him, and he did this hour long thing. And I was like, I, I, I love you. I want your career. I want everything. How do I get that? Um, took him aside. We talked for a little bit. And then when we did our showcase in LA, he had his manager come to our showcase to, to take a look at us and take a look at me. And then I started working with him, Robert, and then um so that that's when but i already booked this gig in new york with joan i'm not gonna miss that <laughs> so then when i got to la i started working with him and got to meet mark and hang out with him a few times and 
he taught me a lot. The the uh, he I just suddenly realized I'm totally name dropping right now. That's so lame, isn't it? You are. My I pretty did. pretty I conceited, am. but I know. <laughs> no, we I love it. Like, this random guy. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, we love it. We I never talk about this. Anyway, no, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, he was really cool. I got to help him and Sonny move. Uh, they were moved to New York. This was a long time ago, um, and he gave me a lot of stuff. Like my dog bed for my dog is something he gave me. And he, they did this thing every week where they did like a vegetarian day. So my, and I just moved to LA and this was a while ago. So it was my first time having like fake chicken, which was so nasty. But I was like, this is great. Right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and they had like coconuts that they drink the coconut water out of like a real coconut. Like I've never oh, seen shit. a real coconut. It's crazy. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was, that was when I got to LA and uh, it was just, it was just so great. I loved it. I love it here. That That's cool. Uh, and real quick, uh, living in New York, what did you think of that whole experience? Hectic. It's, it's wild. Smelly. Yeah. <laughs> the summer was so intense. Have you been there in the summer? Oh, yeah. Humid. Like babies are screaming. People are like puking in like t- uh, the subway. It was, it was like Armageddon. I couldn't believe it's it. Lot. Yeah. And it was so n- I was annoying because like Joan had drivers, so she would just show up and look immaculate, and I'd be like hoofing it for hours to get to these rehearsals. She didn't spaces. give you a ride; she let you sleep. Sometimes over. she did, <laughs> but for the most part, no. Yeah. <laughs> she was busy doing other stuff, <laughs> so I'd show up and I'd be like drenched in sweat. It was so gnarly. Um, so yeah, I I really think New York is amazing, and uh, I've done I've been done shows there before uh, since then, and I would absolutely go back. But I I don't know if I could live there. That lifestyle is really hectic. Yeah. Um, really hectic yeah it's, it's very fast i feel like when i was younger i really wanted to live there yeah i've traveled there so many times and the last few times still love new york for all of our new yeah. york fam out there awesome, awesome place there. but damn two or three days i'm good yeah you know i mean like it, it's a lot it's a lifestyle it's, it's yeah it's it's moving it's it's moving all the time i remember i recently visited my friend eric and we were walking in and there's a, this this rule in New York, which I didn't know at the time, which is if you're walking uh, like after work, like four or five p.m. to somewhere, you can't just stop because you'll get clocked if you do by people that are trying to get their subways home. And he clocked this this woman on the. She was like, "What the fuck?" And it's like, "Where are you?" Just he's like, "No, just keep going." It's like, "Whoa!" It was intense. And that's what I mean about the hectic nature of New York. It's like you got. It's like very. It's like a jungle. Yeah. Have you ever driven in New York? No oh, way. That's that's. Rough. Have you? Twice. He did. What? Yeah. Wait, Courtney, yeah. It was, <laughs> and you survived. And, uh, barely. Well, what's funny is so I rented a car. Dude. We were we were traveling from New York to. Uh, Boston Children's Hospital. It was like a four hour drive. So I had to rent a car. Right. And I remember returning that car so fast when we got back to New York because it's just horrible. Said I'd never do it again. Yeah. But then funny enough, we went to New Hampshire this year to build a basketball court for this kid. Oh, cool. And then we were going to go visit another kid in New York. Same thing. Let's go rent a car. I don't know why. I already learned. The, yeah. Yeah. He was yelling at everyone. Yeah. Well, what's funny is driving in New York for two days, had then having my girlfriend pick me up from LAX. Yeah, I just I got I got back to Orange County in like 17 minutes and then like <laughs> cut every single person off for no reason. Like I just it was in my blood for like two weeks. The intense I nature I of like you gotta no and aggressively like, poor, like these poor Orange County ladies. I'm just like cutting them so off. Then, so I'm just like because that's what you have to do. Yep. You'll get oh, in a yeah. car crash. I'm not even joking. If you're not aggressive in New York, like, yeah. If you're like it's okay, no, you. No. Will Someone will just, yeah. just and if you're not in the car, if you're walking, oh, you're at the same deal. Like they you don't gotta, do crosswalks there. No, it's just a lot of feeling. And the signs <laughs> they don't give a crash. If it says walk or don't walk. They don't pay attention to that at all. And that's the toughest part about driving, too. Yeah. So I closed my eyes a few times. I'm glad you but... survived because that's I probably shouldn't. You wouldn't want to do that. I don't think. Close your eyes. But yeah, I'm glad you lived to tell the tale. <laughs> there was a few times because he didn't want to drive. Remember? You're no, like, oh, you like, like, I'm good. I'm and I was drive. like, oh, dude, there's a couple of times where I, I you were there. There were three cars in one lane. I just went for it. And it worked. I mean, we're here today. So might have lost the hubcap, but we're here. <laughs> we are here uh we love la yeah yeah so. not that driving la is that fun i, I know <laughs> right but it's just not as hectic no it's there's not. traffic for sure you know yeah but, and then yeah orange county is just a breeze to be honest it just yeah. it's, it's that's why i live here <laughs> i never come down to orange county except for like disneyland well now you got to come down i know yeah, right? we, we actually right there. we both have season passes so we like going oh, nice. to that place yeah i used to have a season pass but it's been a while but yeah man i do love that happiest it's, place on earth i don't know why i actually like it more as an adult me well, I never really went there as a kid, but yeah, as an adult, it's a blast. It's fun. It's really fun. Yeah. yeah. And then you take your kids there now yeah. and tell them dad jokes. It's, it's not as it's not as fun when you have kids. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> no, you have to <laughs> take care of kids. Yeah. And you have to go down. What? Like, what do you what do you ride? Like Little Mermaid or Little Mermaid? So no credit coaster Buzz yet. Lightyear. 
No, yeah. Tower of Terror. They're all small. Actually, it's not That's even called Guardian. Tower of Terror anymore. No, it's the Guardians, right? Duh, Guardians. yeah. Gu- escape from something, something? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy Escape from the Some, Tower Terror. Yeah, yeah. No, that's the one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a good one. I, have you been on it since it's been Guardians? Yeah. It's, it's pretty it's good. Awesome. It's My pretty good. The only thing about those, is you can't understand a word that they're saying to you when you're on the elevator oh, or yeah. going up and down. Well, just rock Quill, music. Yeah. yeah. And Quill comes out and like, thanks for saving me. Because we, I'm just that And you're like, Wait, what did we do? How did we do? Did I win? And then you're done. <laughs> it's like, I guess we won the game. I don't know. Yeah, it's like we, we escaped, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a little <laughs> hectic. Like, Driving in New York. I just go but. there with my dad friends and we just drink. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. California Adventure. I love it. Uh, I heard that there's something opening in Disneyland. They're going to serve alcohol other than the uh, Star Wars. Disneyland? Because, yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Can't remember, but I'll probably be at the grand opening, whatever that is. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but so you've done obviously Broadway. It seems like a plethora of acting. What, what drew you to comedy? I, I mean, I know you like making people smile and stuff, but yeah. just the creative side of it. What? Uh, there's something about that laugh. Mm -hmm. If you can get someone to giggle, it's electric and it, uh, I don't know. It's, there's a a real power behind, um, making someone happy. It, it, and it, and it's, um, contagious, obviously laughter is contagious, but like, what I mean is like, if you can make someone laugh, then they'll make someone laugh. Or if they're in a good mood, chances are that good mood will be passed on to another. There's this weird butterfly effect. And the more and more I go into the social media landscape, the more and more I see that, um, as evident. And I didn't, when I was not the role of dad jokes, when I was just kind of, you know, um, meandering through, I, it felt kind of scary. Uh, there's a lot of negativity, which I mean, of course there is, but my little corner that I've been able to carve out, I, I I wish I wish everyone could see what I get to see just for a day. The, the the positivity that gets sent my way is overwhelming. It's a waterfall of gratitude and love and uh, commiseration, and it's just everyone is just so um, kind for the for the most part. Um, <laughs> that that that's probably the biggest prize for me, at least, um, uh, when it comes to the comedy of everything. Is that one people want to laugh with me? That's awesome. And two, that people want to engage as well. They want to comment. They want to send messages of love. Um, they'll send me something through my to my PO box that I'll, I wouldn't expect or something like that. And it's just this in, the interaction is a surprise. I wasn't expecting that. And that's so to go back to your original question, I think that's my favorite part of the comedy as well as the social media stuff is the interaction. You make someone laugh, then they then they'll want to make you laugh or it's, it's good. It's just a really sweet it's way to good. connect. Yeah. That is so cool, man. Yeah. That is so cool. Thanks. Well, I know we've talked about a little bit about your Broadway experiences. Uh, have you done some like film work as well as yeah. an actor? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's hear about like it. A really crappy horror movie. Uh, <laughs> I want to watch it now. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. I was the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was it called? We need to watch I'm it. Not tell you. We need to watch it. You We're going to find you it. You Google gonna that. It. Yeah. Um, I did uh, I did one independent movie that went to, to all the festivals. And that was really cool because I'd never done like the festival circuit before. And that was cha- a really challenging role, too. So that was kind of fun. Um, I've done like all the stuff, you know, and I'm really grateful and lucky that I've had the chance to to do all that. Um, but all that being said is, you know, I, I, I'm not nearly where I dreamed I would be for sure. Um, and I think a lot of actors are in that situation, especially right now with the strike and everything else, it kind of makes it hit even harder. It's really hard, <laughs> um, to be a performer, actor, or artist at all, really, um, in the industry, especially in Hollywood. <clears throat> and, I think that's another reason I really kind of hit the ground running with the Earl of Dad Joke stuff is I think it's vital if you're an artist to f- nourish yourself, whether that's do readings of plays, whether that's constantly practice your drawing, whether it's going to pottery class, something like that. You have to keep yourself nourished because you can't depend on the business to do that for you. What is it? 2% of uh, working actors can make a living, something like that. So you, ha- you have to k- make sure that you don't <clears throat> mix up the business side of it with the artistic nourishment side of it. Those are two separate things. Um, and so as long as you keep nourishing yourself artistically and you know, power that uh, manifests for you, then I think you can have a really healthy life mm-hmm. outside of the chaotic toxicity of Hollywood and trying to get someone to buy your painting or something like that, you know? That's, that's, like, some. I bet you guys can uh, sympathize with, you know? Yeah, all, that hit me really hard. Cause you're, you're doing a lot of your stuff and it's all about spreading positivity. 
um, that campaign that you were talking about earlier, I think was so freaking cool. <clears throat> but I imagine just um, getting all that stuff off the ground running, uh, whatever it's permits or paperwork mm -hmm. you have to do and all that stuff, like all the, the arduous crap, that's it's it kind of breaks your back having to do that. Yeah, that's that's kind of how this whole podcast even started was us just kind of venting about it, really. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. because it's I didn't know that. Uh, so it's happened with with the charity and with Spread Good Squad, just like it happened with my music career way back when that started all of this is when music became a job. That was the goal, making money, not having to work at Target anymore. Totally. But then it's a job. And then it, it took it took away the passion. Yeah. And we've realized that's happened with spreading good. A lot of people don't realize it does cost money and there's like all these factors to it and there's permits, there's paperwork, there's legal stuff. It doesn't mean we don't want to do it, but it's, it's, it's a job. Yeah. So like finding ways, like that's why we kind of go on these like little street adventures and go like help the homeless or help people just simply like no big budgets, no nothing just to like nourish totally. the soul. Cause it like actually feels good. Yeah. It's you know? healthy, but it's, it's hard being on all the time. Yeah. I get that for sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah, really resonated with me. It's tricky too because you never know where you're going to land. You know, Uda Hagen, uh, one of my favorite quotes of hers, who's, she's a really famous um, acting teacher. Uh, she said, um, life is a form of not being sure, of not knowing what next or how. The artist never entirely knows. Uh, we guess. We may be wrong, but we take leap after leap in the dark. And I always, I take, I carry that quote with me because it's like, yeah, just keep leaping, just keep leaping because you're, everyone hits um, walls. Everyone hits, gets drawbacks or, or uh, so, uh, some kind of impasse that they can't get past. But if you keep leaping, as long, you, know, you, you never fail if you never quit, you know? Love that. Love that. We're, yeah. we're wow. putting that on the wall. Yeah, that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be the new, new motto, new motto. Uh, so, I know one thing that you, you've done some like YouTube stuff, right? That's how you met Brie. Uh, yeah. Is that okay? Cool. 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 It's and a then, Darman video. Yeah. 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 Awesome, yeah awesome. I only just, I actually just, I'm doing another one with them this coming week, actually. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. I had no, <laughs> they were, I thought it was an indie short, you know, you get you book a lot of gigs where you're never going to see them. It's just like just some industrial or some indie thing that I'll never see the light of day. So when I, I saw Darman, I was like, what the heck is a Darman? And then <laughs> I, 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 I talked to Brie and a few others and like, oh, it's this YouTube channel. I was like, what? I booked a YouTube video? What the heck? And then I looked it up and I realized what it was. I was like, oh, wow, this guy's spreading like a lot of, lot of good, this company all over the world. Um, and it's a little hokey, <laughs> a lot of hokey. Yeah. Um, it's like blues clues meets like a, like days of our lives kind of feel, <laughs> but right. if you kind of respect the, like, that's just how it's going to be. Like, it's, you know, there's comedia del arte and then there's musical theater. It's like, there's certain ways of expressing art <laughs> and that's just the avenue they, they're taking and it, yeah. it reaches a lot of people. Um, and so, yeah, I'm very grateful to be a part of those videos. Um, they the goodness that they promote is just like invaluable i think that's awesome i i to be honest i actually haven't watched fully so i got to check them have you watched one nope okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. i don't even know what that is <laughs> our man yeah no gotta that's what that. brie was talking about yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so cool cool no and singing do you sing too yeah. this, okay. classically trained wow yeah. okay so when you went to school was it for i'm assuming musical I, theater no it was or? acting i got a mfa in acting at the american conservatory theater awesome. um but be, part of that training was uh singing speech voice movement clowning all that kind of stuff but the cool thing about that program unlike say juilliard or yale which suck just kidding they're amazing <laughs> um <laughs> they teach like the yale method or the juilliard method whereas act would have teachers from those programs that like grads from those programs and so they, they would teach us all the methods and then they would the the teachers were more like shamans they were just incredible would help guide us to kind of create our own toolbox and so that's one of the tools i realized i liked using was was my voice and um i'd always been a singer through like uh high school and i was in the chamber singers i think in college and then i got to grad school I was like okay shakespeare <laughs> <laughs> and like oh we're gonna do some like voice classes too I was like no nah, romeo and then <clears throat> like we started singing like classical songs and I, I i remember how much i loved it um and then that started my journey in musical theater and i i love musical theater so much there's something really special about it that like it just i don't know there's an exuberance to it that idea of like someone's talking and talking and talking it's like a glass of water where it's about to be full and there's a faucet dripping in and when it's like that last drop goes and it spills over that's when the song goes 
it's I just really like the the feeling of this epic nature of storytelling, and I think musical theater captures that in a way that's just so fun for sure, especially when the audience you know yeah. is engaging and yeah, totally. It's 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 thrilling. Yeah. Have you did you ever act in a play? Nope. Growing never up? acted. Never sang. Don't do any of that. Really? Yeah. Nope. Just tell dad jokes to myself. Just dad jokes on the Spread Good Squad. That's his. <laughs> yeah. This is your performance. So, so do you? Uh, do you still sing? Do you? Have yeah. Music. Uh, yeah. I just did a cabaret um, right before I went to Africa. Um, I I have a, a a community out here that I work with quite a bit, and so I usually do a musical or something every year. Or yeah, like two or three a year usually. Wow. Um, or do like an open mic thing, or we have our own little companies that will kind of th- throw up a, a weekend at a. a uh a venue like at the three clubs in hollywood or something like that where we'll do a show that we want to put up together um we used to do this thing called drunk sing-alongs which was so fun nice. where people would just get plastered and we would have would you just sing songs with them and they would sing with us and we'd do these quizzes and like uh earlier when i came in you had one of those spinny wheel things like they'd spin the wheel and it would be like um go the distance from hercules or the lion king song or whatever it landed on we had to go okay go and then we'd figure it out and with props and crap it's just a lot of fun nice you got to go to one of those and then yeah i'll I'll go yeah Yeah. Yeah. as long as we (laughs) could drink i'll go (laughs) there you go that's good liquid courage right and then and so you you did some traveling obviously africa was it the first time you went out of the country or Um, oh no you've been quite a oh yeah i'm uh, i'm super frugal i don't spend money on nothing except for travel me too um yeah i i still wear clothes i wore in high school i like i don't (laughs) i don't need all that but oh i do need i have this intense wanderlust um i don't know if it's about living in la or not but i feel like i have to get out of the city every couple months even it's just like San Francisco or Santa Cruz, something like that. And then every year I try to plan a big, a big trip generally with my dad, my papa. Um, he, like we went to Iceland last year, the year before that went to Peru year before that we went to, uh, uh, Italy and Spain. And then this is our second time in, um, Africa. And wow. it's, it's just life changing there. When you see these animals up close, it's just so cool. Where in Africa did you go? We went to Uganda, Tanzania and Zanzibar. Wow, I want to go. Maybe yeah, that's on my list too. Yeah, Tanzania. We this this trip was really special because we saw the wildebeest migration over the Mara oh, wow. River, and that was wild. You see that in the you know the nature yeah, shows yeah. where like tens of thousands of wildebeest go, yeah. but seeing it in person was was crazy. It was just like deafeningly loud, and it was just like watch. It was like watching a hurricane go down the road. It was so cool. And did you book like a tour that you did? A safari, yeah. Okay, That's safari. the only way you really can. Yep. Um, you have to book a safari to go through the national parks. And we went to the Terengiri, or, or Terengiri? I think it's Serengeti, um, Serengeti and in Gorogoro Crater uh, in Tanzania. And then when we went to Uganda, we went up north and went to the um, Gorilla. Oh, crap. I even got a certificate because it was so cool. <laughs> gorilla something 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 where you get to go into the jungle and there's these habituated gorillas which are basically just gorillas that are used to having people kind of walk through the jungle so they don't attack or go go crazy as long as you're not an idiot (laughs) and we got to walk and hang out with these like eight giant gorillas wow yeah like where you are now was a silverback just staring me down and i was like this is crazy Uh, it was like why am i looking at you don't look at it (laughs) i'll run away it's like tiger king monkey edition it was a lot that's that's awesome i would go back in a heartbeat yeah, that's have on you the guys list. been to not Africa, not Africa, but I really want to go. Yeah, really it's, go. it's really cool. Yeah, no, it looks a, like a lot of fun. A lot yep. of fun. One day, but with someday, you guys are pretty busy. Said, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. We might have to go spread good in Africa, though. Yeah, you know, I'm down. We'll find a way. Find a way. Do a a dad joke concert series. There we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dad joke <laughs> concert series. <Yeah. laughs> Look at that. But I, I, speaking of uh, dad jokes, I've been looking forward to this moment the whole day because I think we need a little dad joke competition competition yeah competition i don't, I don't, know, so, I don't think i've actually ever done a so dad joke it's competition. Like a, Are you i think it's kind uh, of like yeah, a, just, it's yeah, like yeah, a dance off right it's like so you know like oh, a, i'm familiar with step those. up you know so right. so um let's do a little rochambeau to see who goes first we'll keep it fair oh gosh i have to think right. of a dad joke right now yeah you got a rochambeau all right ready rochambeau nick one nick do you want to go first or second uh second i don't okay so i'm first yeah right? you're first okay um 
Did you hear about that guy? <laughs> <laughs> he's already laughing. Hey, you, you didn't even tell the joke. He's already laughing. This is not fair. Sorry, it's not fair. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Oh, I. No one's gonna laugh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. I I I lost it. Okay. Uh, did you hear about that? Uh, <laughs> did you hear about that factory explosion <laughs> at the cheese? <laughs> Did you hear about that cheese factory explosion that in in France the other day? Yeah, debris was everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one point. One point. Oh, God, I'm gonna hyperbole. Oh, dude, you better chuck that beer, Nick. <laughs> I think I would have to like before I give him a point. I would have to hear Nick's oh, to see it, which one I choose. I oh, okay. that makes sense. Okay. Good one. All right, good one. Keeping the keeping it fair play. All right. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell you guys the one about the vacuum, but it sucks. <laughs> okay. That was actually pretty good. That was, that was good. good. That was good. I mean, it was good. Right, so first, who's, first the point? who's the point? Who's the point? Who's the point? Crush it. <laughs> okay. Did you hear about the... the <laughs> wait. <laughs> I'm going to get this one right. This is one of my favorites. The um, if, I, if I can get it right. Uh, what do you get when you cross an angry sheep... With an angry cow. Well, you get two animals that are in a bad <laughs> mood. All right, I lost. <laughs> that was pretty good. I don't, I, you should have saved that for like the finale. That was really good. I think it's over. I think it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. I don't know dude. why that joke dude. kills me. Oh, that dude, he, he I'm killed crying. the bot, dude. He killed the bot. Um, all right, Nick, come on. Uh, for for just just to represent, come on, all you right. got to give us your outro. Um, I know you're packing heat. Come on, I'm not. <laughs> so, um, it's pressure. So, uh, when my wife was um, giving labor to our baby a couple weeks ago. I was trying to tell her jokes to make her laugh. It worked. <laughs> she didn't laugh. You want to know why? Why? The delivery. It was the delivery. No! Oh! 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 I messed it up. No, that was good. Oh, I think that was part of the joke, right? Yeah, that, that was part of it. That was part of it. Can I tell dude. an R-rated joke only because yes. I never get to yes. tell them? Let's go. This is the place to do it. I'm very happy that I've curated a PG channel. Yeah. Awesome. But there are so many really nasty jokes <laughs> that kill me. Um, so I don't, hopefully, oh man, if you're a kid, don't check with your parents if you're listening to this, please. Uh, what did Cinderella say when she finally got to the ball? <laughs> Sorry. Hey, that's a good Dude, that I don't know so if that's good. a dad joke, but that I was, I was not expecting oh, that. Yeah, that was good. I think I lost Dude, yeah, I lost 200 calories on the podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Another <laughs> another R rating. Dude, Do you this have is another so one? good. Dude, uh, uh, I've never even heard that one. Would you uh would you ever say those type of jokes on your TikTok? Hell no. <laughs> I, I would absolutely not. I'm very I love the uh, I don't know the the family friendly thing I'm doing yeah, there. No, you're good. I have thought about making another channel just for like R rated jokes. I can I can also see how that would be a, like um, I don't know if you guys get this at all, but it's, every now and then I'll get someone that will meet me in person that or are disappointed when they meet me because I'm not like hyperventilating and red and laughing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> I, 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 I sometimes I am, but I'm yeah, not, no, no one can live that way. They would kill themselves. So <laughs> oftentimes, that I can see the disappointment in their eyes, and, I, and I'm like, "Oh, I got to be funny," and I don't, I don't want to be that. I want to be right. able to just be myself. Be you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what yeah. we talk about all the time. Yeah, ah, oh, so, dude, that, that's tricky. That's so good though. That I said that one was really good. It's really <laughs> yeah, good. Of course, you like the that bad one. mood one or the <laughs> both of them. But that was the one that got me. Oh man. Dude, wait. Um, you guys are who? Ha have you heard of Murphy's Law? Murphy's Law? Yeah. Do you know what it is? No. no. <laughs> Do you not really know Murphy's Law? No. Do you know it? No. Do you know it? You know Murphy's Law, right? Yeah, isn't it? Um, uh, 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 no, I don't. <laughs> it's, uh, it's if something bad can happen, it will happen. Oh, that's right. 
Wait, that's your dad joke? No, no, no. He, oh, he's, just, he's doing the setup right now. <laughs> yeah. I was dude, trying to laugh. Man. I don't my... get it, dude. Have you heard of Cole's Law? No. Shredded cabbage. It's a, it's a side dish. So, you got a bright future, dude. dude, dude. <laughs> the structure's there. <laughs> Coach me, coach me. So th this is a good, this is a good moment. I had a question for you. Oh, okay. Since you're just like trashing on Nick. Le earlier you said like, you just want to be you. Yeah. So who is Lucas? Who's, who's Lucas? Ooh, I like that. God. Existential. I feel like I'm on a Barbara Walter show. Well, Lucas is, um, who is Lucas? Lucas is, <laughs> I'm, I'm just a guy. Stand in front of a bunch of other guys, pretending to be a guy named Earl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what What about the Wheaties hat? Oh yeah, yeah. What about the tell Wheaties us, hat? Tell us about the Wheaties hat. You know, it's funny, and I, I I'm sorry I shouldn't have put this out like this. I can't tell you about the Wheaties hat. Really, it was given to me by someone really, really special, um, and. I carry that person with me wherever I go. They're not with us anymore. And so the Wheaties hat would just became, um, I don't want to say like a safety blanket or something like that, but it became a, a source of comfort. So I started wearing this before I started wearing dad jokes. It was just a hat that I wore every day. And every time I wore it, it would remind me of them. So I, then when it became kind of like part of my brand, if you want to call it that, uh, it really felt special to me that that person was somehow involved even though they're not here anymore. So that's all I can really give you about that. Nice. But um, this is not actually that Wheaties hat. <laughs> that Wheaties hat is like, it's still really special to me, but it got destroyed in Africa. Um, the dust and the, the water and everything. It's just a raggedy mess. And my mom was like, you got to get a new Wheaties hat, honey, because you look like a hobo fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And so I, I posted something like, like, I got to give my dad my, my hat to my dad. Um, because he tells jokes all the time. So I need a new one. And an awesome follower of mine sent me this hat. So that's the P box. So this is the first time I've actually Wheaties worn this that hat. Is. Yeah. And so it's going to be you my saw new first. My new Wheaties hat. Boom. There you go. Thank you. Shout out Karen for looking out. You know, yeah, making sure real. you're looking fresh. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, mom. You rock. <laughs> oh, man. The, uh, is everything okay? I can't ever tell another dad joke. <laughs> you know retired. what? Practice makes perfect. Yeah, no, before, before it got I crazy, do got I felt like there was a good coaching opportunity. You got there was synergy. Yeah, you, the, so the, the delivery. You know, if, what, what in doubt, just maintain really intense eye contact for the whole joke. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <I got laughs> People you. get really uncomfortable. And so whether they laugh because you're funny or, or laugh because you're uncomfortable, you still get a laugh. No, you guys both made us laugh, dude. That, that was good. That's funny. I get so many comments are like, you're not funny. Stop telling jokes, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, so thanks, guys. This is really vindicating for no, me. No, dude, it, this has been awesome. Not, honestly, I've had a blast with you. Thank you for coming Same. on and making us laugh so hard. My pleasure. Uh, dude, this, thank you for thank spreading you. so much good. Seriously, you spread so much good. Likewise. Where can people find more of your dad jokes, your content? Uh, my name's at, at Earl of Dad Jokes on everything. Uh, right Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. I've never done that before. Oh, yeah. Like, like, See, it's this? like, a, like a Disney commercial. Like, like Dana White. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, yeah. At Earl of Dad Jokes. Cool. Um, cool. Um, well, that's where you'll find me. And uh, I'm, I'm just pretending these work. Nothing works. So, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> so um, what, what's next for you, man? Uh, I got a shoot coming up next week. I'm cool. working on a, a musical uh, that's a sequel to A Midsummer Night's Dream called A Midsummer Nightmare. It's written by Michael Shaw Fisher. It's so good. Nice. Um, that's coming up uh, pretty soon. I have another shoot after that. Uh, but the writer strike killed so many things. So these are all non-union. They're all okay to do. I promise. <laughs> um, but yeah, as soon as the writer strike is over, I plan to hit the ground running. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're we're super stoked to have uh, had you on. Thanks, guys. Excited for more jokes to come. Yeah. Nick, the I comeback. On my, the comeback is stronger than the setback. Okay. So it's gonna it's gonna be good, dude. I, I there's a the future's bright. <laughs> <laughs> Never. What, what was the quote? I I have to hear that quote again. Wait, which quote? The, the quote? Hogan one. Yeah. Oh, oh the motto. Yeah, yeah. Uh, life is a form of not being sure, not knowing what next or how. The moment you know how, you begin to die a little. The artist never entirely knows. We guess. We may be wrong, but we take leap after leap in the dark. So just keep leaping. I gotta take another leap because my dad took shit. Is <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, you did good. It was no, good. It was good. Great. It really was, it was good. Funny. Um, Man, I'm 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 just so high off this right now. Yeah. That's hilarious, bro. Thank Thanks you, for having me, thank guys. you, thank you, I really thank you really for spreading you. it, man. You're making a lot of people smile, a lot of people laugh. Um, shoot, if you like this episode, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, yeah. and.
Squish the bell. Squish the bell. That was the last episode. Oh. Smash the bell button. Smash the That's bell. the subscribe button. Yep. Ding, ding, subscribe. Ding. I've never heard subscribe. of the bell. I was like, there's a bell? <laughs> no, right? Yeah. We didn't know about it until a few months ago either. Copy that. But cool. until then, yeah. take shots. Talk shit. And tell dad jokes. Cheers. Tell dad jokes. 